Hello and welcome to another Blender tutorial and this time we're going to talk about the best settings to use when you're rendering a movie file from Blender. So when you're animating in Blender you're going to be moving or modifying your objects over time by creating keyframes on the timeline at the start and at the end points. For example you might animate an object's position or you can change its scale and its rotation as well as a range of other properties. When animating, you'll often need to refer to the dope sheet. So first of all, let's drag down a new window and turn it into a dope sheet. We're going to make a simple animation of a cube moving. So first of all, switch on the keyframe record button, ensuring that your playhead is in frame one. Reposition your cube to where you want it to be when the animation starts. And you'll notice that a new keyframe is added in the dope sheet and on the timeline. Move the playhead to frame 50 and move the cube to where you want it to be at the end of the animation and Blender will add a keyframe on frame 50 for you. We now have a keyframe at the start and one at the end of our animation. Switch the record button off and enter camera mode by pressing 0 on your number pad. Whatever you see in camera view is what's going to be rendered in the end. So by default we have 250 frames of animation when Blender opens but in this case we only want to render 50 frames so click on the end 250 button and change it to 50 instead. In the render tab under dimensions you can choose what resolution you want to export. We're going to change the values to 1280 by 720 and increase the quality to 100%. This is 720p high definition which is not full high definition Full, full HD is 1920 by 1080, but 720p is YouTube high definition quality. Make sure that you can see your animation in camera view by scrubbing the playhead. If not, adjust your camera angle or position so that you can see the cube clearly moving from one point to another. Change the frame rate to 25 frames per second. As we have 50 frames of animation, when we render our animation is going to be exactly two seconds long. Under the output section, make sure you change the output folder from the temp folder to a new folder you create, or you may lose your rendered files, especially if you're working on a Mac because it's quite difficult to find that temp folder if you accidentally use it. Under file format, choose PNG or ping. You should always render a sequence of still images because rendering to a video file automatically reduces the quality through compression. And if something happens to go wrong during the render, like your computer switches off or um, there's a power cut, then you lose the whole file and you have to start rendering all over again. Whereas if you use still images, if you render still images and if something goes wrong, you still get to keep all of the images that were rendered up to that point and you can just continue on from there. As well as that, PNG files are high quality images so you, you get the maximum quality as well. So we're now ready to render. Press the animation button in at the top of the render tab. If you check the folder you created, you can start to see the images being added by Blender one by one into that folder. This is going to take a while, so depending on the complexity of the animation. So take a break for a little while and come back. Rendering is basically what 3D software does when it's calculating how the light in a scene affects the objects in that scene and how the light bounces off of them and into the camera lens. The more detail and complexity that you have in your scene in terms of polygons, objects, materials, and lighting effects the longer that it will take to render. So save your file and open a new one. We're now going to import the image sequence we created into Bl Blender's video sequence editor which is kind of like iMovie or Windows Movie Maker or Adobe Premiere or Final Cut Pro. Change the 3D view to the video sequence editor in Blender. Add a video preview screen by clicking the icon beside the checkerboard. Click the Add menu button and select Movie from the list. 
navigate to the folder containing your image sequence. Uh, you probably won't see any of the images because we haven't told Blender to allow us to see images. It's only looking for movie files at the moment. So click the Show Image Files button at the top of the screen so we can see the images in the folder. Press A to select them all and then click Add Movie Strip. Your images will be added to the timeline. Press A to deselect all and then A again to select all of the images in the sequence. Press G to grab or move the images and drag them down so they start at frame 1. Change end 250 to end 50 again so we're only rendering 50 frames. Change the render settings again to 720p at 100% and 25 frames per second. Change the output folder to a new folder where, or you can just save to the desktop. This time, instead of PNG as the file format, choose QuickTime Movie or .mov if the option is available to you and change the codec to H.264. If this option is not available on your computer, choose H.264 instead and then change the preset drop down menu to H.264 as well, which you'll find under the encoding heading. Press the animation button at the top of the render tab and it's going to render much more quickly this time as Blender doesn't have to calculate the lighting for each frame. So this has been a quick look at one of the best ways to render your Blender animations without losing quality or risking the loss of all of your work.